This place will have miracles and see God's hand in action. Let us stand and invite the Lord's presence upon the service today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, we adore you. We come into your house with thanksgiving. We enter to your courts with praise. We come before your presence, Lord, today. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, this Sunday morning, we come into this house to worship you and to praise you, to magnify you and to glorify you, Lord. For, Lord, thou art worthy to be praised and worshiped and adored. Father, Lord, bless every part of the service today, Lord. Bless the song service, the praise team, Lord. Let them just lift us up into the heavenlies today, Lord. Bless Brother Renfro as he ministers to us today, Lord. Let him to speak the oracles of God today. Father, Lord, we pray that you meet every need in this congregation today. Those that need healing, let your healing power to flow, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing and let's worship and praise the Lord this morning. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to clap my hands. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to clap my hands. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to clap my hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to shout for joy. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to shout for joy. And I don't know what you came to do, but I came to shout for joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just came from a turned on church and they were praising the Lord. I just came from a turned on church and they were praising the Lord. Well, I just came from a turned on church and they were praising the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. And I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I don't know what you came to do, but I came to clap my hands. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to clap my hands. And I don't know what you came to do, but I came to clap my hands. Hallelujah! 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 And I don't know what you came to do, but I came to shout for joy. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to shout for joy. And I don't know what you came to do, but I came to shout for joy. Hallelujah. 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 And I just came from a turned on church And they were praising the Lord I just came from a turned on church 
And they were praising the Lord. And I just came from a turned on church. And they were praising the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I don't know what you came to do. But I came to praise the Lord. again hallelujah i know he has great things in store for us this morning if we will just open up our hearts and receive what he has for us hallelujah i feel a stirring in the atmosphere something good is gonna happen here god's awesome power is drawing near i feel a stirring in the atmosphere I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the we have come with different needs We have come expecting victory He said his children he will not deny I'm not gonna leave until I'm satisfied I feel a stirring in the atmosphere Something good is gonna happen here God's awesome power is drawing near I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. We have come with different needs. We have come expecting victory. He said his children he will not deny. I'm not going to leave until I'm satisfied. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Well, something good is going to happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Well, something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Shekinah glory is in this place. So strong, I can almost see his face. I feel a stirring in this heart of mine. Hallelujah, it's worship time. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Well, something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. I feel a stirring. heart of mine hallelujah 
It's worship time. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Something good is gonna happen here. Just the power is drawing me. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Something good is gonna happen here. Just the power is drawing me. him hallelujah praise his holy name hallelujah because of who he is and when we get our minds on jesus hallelujah great things will happen when we get our minds off of ourselves and off of our situations and just focus in on the one who is worthy and who can solve all our problems hallelujah think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. And when I think about the Lord, how he picked me up, he turned me around, and how he placed my feet on solid ground it, it makes, makes me wanna shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise it makes me wanna shout hallelujah thank you jesus Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. And when I think about the Lord, how he picked me up, he turned me around, and how he placed my feet on solid ground. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank 
thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me, to the uttermost and when i think about the lord how he picked me up he turned me around and how he placed my feet on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. Don't it want to make you shout? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about where he brought you from? Do you realize that he loved you when you and I was unlovable? When other folks wouldn't maybe didn't want to be around us, he wanted to be close to us. That's why you sent his son. Would you sing that one more time? When you think about it, think about what God has done for you where he's brought you from, where you're at today. Don't it want to make you shout, oh, hallelujah. Where would I be without Jesus? Sing it again, that chorus. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. And when I think about the Lord, how he picked me up, he turned me around, and how he placed my feet on solid ground, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, and all of the honor, and all of the praise, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, and all of the honor, and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, and all of the honor, and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of 
the praise. It makes me want to shout. Does it make you want to shout? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Turn around and shake somebody's hand. And you may be seated in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody praise his name. I said somebody praise his name. We live in such of a blessed country that we can gather wherever we want to gather in a church house or in our homes or on the street side and we can bless his name. Reading some things about some of the missionaries overseas, how dangerous and how they have to secretly worship, especially in uh, China. But that's one of the g largest growing Christian areas in China because of their persecution. And I got to thinking as I was reading some of this material, got to thinking, do we know the difference between a, being a Christian, somebody said that's Christ-like, and the difference between being a Christian and a following of Christ. There is a difference. Hello. I said there is a difference. Being a Christian is being born again by the blood of Jesus, having our sins forgiven. But to be the follower of Jesus is practicing what Jesus taught every day in our lives. Are you a Christian or are you a follower of Jesus? That's the question that's been in my mind for the last several weeks since I've read this material. Kind of, Lord, let me think about it, what I think about it. We welcome you this morning to our morning worship. You say, well, where's the... Uh, lead pastor at he's in church he's preaching this morning in spirit life a special service they're having there this morning but we're glad that you're here do we have any first time guests first time you ever been in the old court church of God just raise your hand we don't want to embarrass you anybody there I knew we had somebody there we're glad to give my hand clap for being with us come a long way a long way. We're glad to have him with us this morning. And we're glad that you're here. And let's continue our worship as our pastor comes. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've got a number of announcements that we want to make to you today. <laughs> Amen. Tonight after service, we'll be having our journey fellowship uh, everyone is invited to the Denny's there in Okoy for a time of fun and fellowship. So journey fellowship tonight at Denny's. Our pecans or pecans are in. I have a bag of each. I got a bag of pecans and a bag of pecans. <laughs> they got pieces and we got halves. They're all eight dollars a bag. Just see me after church and we'll get you taken care of. Uh, praise team practice Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Uh, if you need to keep in touch with Okoy Church of God, if you have a phone and you can get text messages, all you have to do is email, uh, text Okoy C O G to 292929, and you can be on our text uh, list here and get all important information here which is very important. Women's Bible study is uh, Thursday at 7 p.m. with Sister Wendy, the Women's Contagious Joy Bible study. Coffee and dessert will be served. So all the ladies need to be here Thursday night to get your dessert and coffee and to study the to be a contagious joy uh, Bible study. Prime Timers Fellowship this weekend. Their, their Thanksgiving dinner will be Saturday at 5 p.m. There's a list in the back on the bulletin board of uh, what you would like to bring. Just uh, put your name on there and tell us what you're going to bring so we'll know what kind of food we are having. Uh, Pastor's Breakfast is next Sunday for all of our uh, 
people, our visitors and our newcomers uh, be next Sunday during Sunday school at 10 o'clock a.m. The girls is having a camp out this week, girls club, Friday, November 21st. So that's a week away. It's not this week. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Do not forget the uh, Thanksgiving dinner uh, baskets. It uh, costs you $25 if you would like to uh, donate. Uh, some of you have already done this. Uh, Pastor Christie and Pastor Christie and I, and I know Pastor uh, uh, Wendy and uh, Pastor Thomas. We've already put ours in, but uh, it's very important that we do this. We're trying to help 10 families this year. So $25, if you want to put it in, just put it in the offering today and designate it the uh, David Holly Thanksgiving Fund. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Come on back. I would like to thank those that already have donated for this cause and that uh, if you know of a family that would need a a complete meal they, they'll cook it turkeys and uh, all the things that go along with it I know the other last week Sister Renfro and I had a call and went and picked up a homeless guy that uh, uh, another brother and sister had been feeding in the woods for a number uh, a year or two uh, and uh, which somebody had took him in and we took him to get a few things to eat and I asked them I said what y'all doing about Thanksgiving would you like to have a Thanksgiving meal for for you and he somebody loving enough took him in their home to get him out of the woods and I know I've added one so if you need to know somebody let the church office know that who that person is and we make sure they would get that uh, meal to them now it's time for us to continue our worship. Have you enjoyed the blessings of the Lord already this morning? I feel His Spirit all around this place this morning. As we prepare to worship the Lord with our giving and our tithe paying. As we know, tithe is not giving. Did you realize that? According to the Scripture, it's not giving. That's already His. You're just returning to Him, which is His. And giving is above the tithe. And as we, as I've been studying on that a little bit, uh, how he, somebody said, well, uh, that was uh, in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. And it, it, it was even before the law was giving. And uh, God wanted that which he has provided. And I'm so glad that he has provided. I could tell testimony after testimony how he blessed me. And I'll share again with you. When I used to work on public job, you know, they every year and give out the raises, and I would pay my tithes based on what I want my next raise to be. I actually done that. I knew what I was getting, and I had no idea what I was going to get my raise would be, but I would pay my tithes on what my next raise, and God had never failed me the whole years that I worked on public job. God will not fail you if you are consistent and faithful to him. Our usher is going to uh, serve you from the rear. Then we're going to bring it up here and we're going to ask God's blessings upon it. Uh, usher's service at this time.
Father, we're so thankful for your grace and your mercy to us. Thankful for this day that we can come and return your tithe to you and bless you and bless the storehouse. And Lord, above that, give those special love gifts. I ask you to open up the windows of heaven, the Lord, to all those that was faithful and obedient to you. And Lord, I ask you to bless this offering to each one that gave. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Continue our worship as Sister Mercer comes and leads us in worship. There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, he sends out a light, a light that I might see. And the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead me o'er. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, this ship would sail no more. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him, for King Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the paths of sin, He has shown His light around me. That I could clearly see If it wasn't for the lighthouse Tell me where would this ship be Everybody that lives around me Says tear that lighthouse down The big ships don't sail this way anymore There's no use in them standing round But then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time I saw the light, the light from that old lighthouse that stands up there on the hill. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him, for King Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the paths of sin, He has shown His light around me, that I could clearly see. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, tell me where would this ship be? Everybody that lives around me says tear that lighthouse down. The big ship don't sail this way anymore there's no use in them standing round but then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time I saw the light the light from that old lighthouse that stands 
up there on the hill and I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to him for King Jesus is the lighthouse and from the paths of sin he has shown his light around me that I could clearly see if it was for the lighthouse tell me where would this ship be how true if it wasn't for Jesus where would we be I hate to think about it where I would be without the Lord his grace his love and his mercy somebody praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah can I just speak from my heart this morning even before I start in the message I don't know if any of you ever been like me sometimes but the last few days it seems like I've just been in a bind you ever get that southern expression between a knot and a hard place? Seem like I'm just in a bind. Hallelujah. Jesus is on his way just as Christmas is on his way and he might get here before Christmas hallelujah we get depending upon so many things in this life As for several weeks, I've been reading some of these passages of scriptures I'm going to share with you and trying to put my thoughts down. About three days ago, as I had part of them down and I saved them in my computer, a day or two ago, my my computer crashed. That means I can't get in, I can't get nothing out. We get depending upon so many things. And our greatest need is our dependence should be upon the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember 34, 30 or 40 years ago when I didn't have a computer and how I studied and wrote everything down by hand in all my notes. I remember the days of the first church for our bulletin. I had one of those flippy floppies that I don't know if you... You had to type out on a on a uh, a form, and you wrapped it around this uh, a drum with ink. Then you flip it, and then your bulletins went through. Don't have to do that no more. 
you made a mistake just too bad now you can view it on everything and before you print it out you can make all the changes and nobody know you even if you're not a good speller like I am you can just hit that spell check and it'll correct all you know all those good things that calls me to remember that on my job uh, when I was trying to do some special uh, work or some reports I would type out or uh, type out or write down my thoughts and what I wanted to say when I turned and give it to my secretary I said now you fix it up make me look good like I know what I'm talking about and she always did but I'm glad that the blood of Jesus can make us look good you say Renfro you're taking time I'm just want to get unbound a little bit how I love Jesus oh to be like him You know, sometimes it, let's get real, sometimes it's not always easy just to be like Jesus. You get out and meet folks in the world that is hateful and mean. That old carnal man kind of wants to act like the old carnal world. But to be like Jesus. That's what I long to be. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. James, the fifth chapter. One, two, two scriptures I use as a text. As you're turning, let me pray. Father, I thank you for this day. Lord, you know the situation I'm in. Lord, you know all about me. But Lord, I do pray this this morning right now that your thoughts will invade my mind and the thoughts that I would share would be your thoughts and Lord your words would invade my tongue and that the words that I would speak would be the words that you'd want me to share with your people this morning God I thank you now for this short time bless me that I can bless others in the name of Jesus Amen and Amen in the last several years or so the scriptures has become a different to me than never before I've read in the scriptures and we've read through the Bibles a few times but lately in the last several months or year or so I looked at the scriptures a little different I look at them that they're relevant today even the Old Testament there's so many principles and teachings that God has for us today even as we look in the Old Testament Scripture says that heaven and earth may pass away but his word will stay eternally and as I read about men of the scriptures uh, Paul and James and uh, many of the disciples there for a long time you know I read the stories and this is just story but when I really come to realize these was men and women as Sister Lois was and Sister Ruth was, men and women that was born of woman that had flesh just like I flesh, and if you pinch them, they hurt too. But a lot of times we read the scriptures and think they are supernatural people, but they wasn't. Did you hear me? They were just regular people. The difference was God called them and they listened 
what any difference today than it was back in the day of Elijah. Elijah didn't have a computer that crashed on him. And I'm going to show you in the scriptures that the first home delivery, you know, piece of a hut and all these things, you know, call up and they deliver it right to your home. But listen to the text I want to read here. Reading from the New King James. Elijah was a man with a nature or a passion like ours. Born a woman. He hurt like we hurt. He had feelings like we had. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. He prayed like preachers talking about in Sunday school. He prayed. He prayed. Did you hear me? He prayed. What is prayer but communication with God? And you mentioned something in Sunday school this morning, Pastor, about praying, always praying. I'm learning how to do that. You just walk around, you just praise Him, and once in a while I'll be walking by and uh, just thanking the Lord or, or asking him something, Sister Renfro. So what did you say? I'm just, I'm just talking to the Lord. And I'm learning that becomes contagious. You might be about your regular business, but you can learn to constantly. You might have your mind, you have to be multitasking. But he said, and he prayed and it rained not. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. What a prayer. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain. And the earth, the earth produced its fruit. I just want to use that text to let you know that he was just a man like you and I. And if he could pray and get those kinds of results... Why can't we pray and get our healing? Why can't we pray and get our needs met? Another scripture that uh, was in the Sunday school lesson, sometimes we pray amiss. We need to pray his will. And one thing is, I know his will for me not to suffer and you not to suffer. And I know when we pray and we really get a hold of the horns of the altar, it stirs something up in hell. Reminds me of Daniel when he prayed, when he began to be constantly and dedicated, a man like you and I, but turned towards Jerusalem and he prayed. It stirred up something because the prince of Persia hindered that prayer. To God sent the angel Michael. I was right there. I want to tell you there's not enough of devils in hell. As the preacher taught Sunday school this morning. Who will continue on. Praying. And say God is this your will. I know it's your will to heal me. I see it in scripture. By the stripes that applied to the back of Jesus. Is my healing. And I'm going to keep praying. Even though I don't feel it. Because it's your will. I want you to notice, now go with me to the 17th chapter of 1 Kings. Talking about Elijah. We see Elijah. Let me kind of set the stage here. First of all, Israel, God's chosen people, and to the land that he had given them, at this time we see them, their divided kingdom. There's a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. And in the northern kingdom it's been said that Samaria was the capital. And King Ahab, according to the writings, that he was the one of the worst kings of the kingdom of Israel. You know, he had Jezebel as a wife. Turned to idol worship, to other gods. It, it just repulsed God that after all that he had done for his children, they turned their backs upon him. 
Hallelujah. And we see Elijah on the scene. And God told him in the 17th chapter to tell uh, Ahab it's not going to rain. I'm going to stop the rain. I'm going to stop the dew. I'm going to stop and get your attention. I'm going to get your attention. And while that happened, God told him, Now get up from ants. Because of this drought that's coming, you're going to need to be fed. Go by to the brook Cherith. For in there I'm going to supply your needs of water. Not only while you're there in that particular situation, I'm going to develop and send the first home delivery. I'm going to commission my ravens to bring you bread and flesh every morning and every evening. I'm going to meet your needs. While you're in this particular situation, I'm going to supply your needs. My three faults I want to mention real quick. First thing, we need to look back. Everybody says, don't do it. Look back to the past. The scripture says, ask for the old past. And I'm going to read that scripture. The problem of going back to the past if folks get st stuck in the past and want to live in the past. Do you remember the last time that God really come down and shook your bell? Do you remember the last time that God rung your bell and you felt the glory come down and you felt the joy of the Lord, that you felt like that you could run over a troop and just keep running? There's nothing that the devil could do to stop you you felt so anointed and so good remember those days I want to really preach now remember those days remember what God done Elijah look here I'm going to supply your water for it is essential for life he said you'll drink water to the Samaritan woman I'll give you water that you did not know about. And it's essential for a spiritual life. Go back to the well. Go back to the well and drink afresh. So here we see Elijah at the brook Cherith. There we see the ravens feeding him. And the scripture says, if you know the scriptures, I won't read them all. It comes to a place and time by natural course. If there's no rain, there's no dew, the brook's going to dry up. You see, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. And because I'm in the world, I'm going to be affected of things that affect the world. But because I'm in Him, He will supply my needs when I need them at that particular time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody said, the devil made me do it. Don't, I don't believe that a bit. The devil don't make us do anything that we will not submit to. But if we trust in Him and stand our ground upon the solid rock, I'd stand in Jesus Christ, the devil cannot overcome us. Hallelujah. The brook dried up. The ravens start coming and feeding it. He says, this is an amazing thing. Can I just my folly a little bit? See, I, I believe that God's still speaking to us today. Here, we see reading the scripture, God speaking to Elijah and told him where to go. Now, God speaks to us today through his scriptures. But I also believe that he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit right to our spirit. Hello. I said he wants to speak to us through our spirit. Something we feel. So the brook dried up and he said, now, 
The Lord said, now I, I got a place for you to go. I'm going to sustain you through this time of trouble. Through this time that I am bringing judgment upon Israel. You see, judgment is coming upon America. Hello? I believe judgment is coming upon America. And until the Lord comes back, we that are followers of Jesus Christ, we're going to be affected by the judgment that comes upon America. Oh, I'm God's child. He's going to, we're going to be affected by it. But through that judgment time, I want to tell you, God will be our need according to his word. He will supply the need during that time that the world will be suffering and your neighbors will be suffering. But we will also have some suffering. But because of him, he will be our need. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you know what the history says. And the, the Lord said, now I want you to go to a widow woman. I want you to go to this uh, 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 say that town and you're going to meet a woman. You're going to ask her to make you some bread. The story says at the gate he made him the, the widow woman's there clicking the sticks, getting ready to build a fire and getting ready to eat their last meal. I got to hurry. I want to try to get you out. But I need to share this. We know that the woman says, hey, we're going to eat, and me and my son, we're going to die. Already first miracle, the rain stopped. Second miracle, God fed him, by, told him where to go and met his need. Third miracle here, he said, lady, go fix me first something. What audacity of the preacher to go to a widow woman and say, you feed me first. I don't believe he would have done that unless God told him to. Hello. And I don't believe she would have done that if she didn't, wouldn't lay it some by the Spirit of the Lord. According to the scriptures, he went ahead and made that bread and got that oil out of the crews, made him a whole cake first. You might know what a whole cake is. Made a whole cake first. They ate. The meal barrel never run dry. The crews of oil never run dry. The whole time it was there, God met the need. I want to tell you whatever circumstance you're in, God will meet the need. Now, it was an amazing thing after God blessed them and they met the need, another miracle happened. It's just like the devil when you've gone through the difficulty and now you've seen that you're being blessed. She wasn't going hungry, and her, uh, her son wasn't going hungry. The preacher wasn't going hungry. But one day you come in, she was a crying and moaning and complaining. My son is dying. Just like when there's victory, the devil comes in, tries to sap our victory, tries to steal everything that we got. As we know, the miracle took place when he took the son out of her arms and went upstairs. And God worked a miracle and he come back down and brought her son. Remember what God has done for you. What a miracle that God can work. Then following that time, and I'm going to kind of fast forward, we know about... He was on his way to meet Ahab. Tell him the rain's on his way. 
And Ahab said, you're the one that's troubling Israel. Elijah said, no, you're the one who caused the trouble. The devil says, if you had done what you ought to have done, that's why the predicament that you're in. The devil liked for, to blame us for our situation. But I want to tell you, because, you know why, why we have sickness? Do you know why we have cancer? Do you know why we have diseases? A three-letter word. Sin. When sin, I'm not saying you've sinned, but we all have sin at one time. But because of sin, it has in, these diseases has infected this world. But because of Jesus, our sins are forgiving. And because of Jesus, our diseases are healed. And the devil says, you're the reason why all of this is happening. Because your God has forsaken you. But I want to tell you, my God has not forsaken me. Even though that I might be in a bound and, and, and up, he still hasn't forgotten me for whatever you're going through. As he met, keep fast forward. I'll keep watching that clock. Fast forward. As we know, as he challenged the prophets of Baal, the 450, and God worked a miracle, calling fire come from heaven, remembering where we've been, remembering what God has done, the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Remembering. Now we catch him in a situation he got word that Jezebel made a proclamation. I'm going to do to you what you have done to my prophets. This time tomorrow, this will be in the 19th chapter. I'm going to take you out. And I'm going to do to you. That's what the devil says. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. When we look back, we see what God has done. According to the scriptures, he took off running. He didn't ask God, God, what should I do? You know, so many times we take things into our own hand. We try to figure it out ourselves instead of going before the cross and saying, God, what should I do? Elijah heard God before. Now, because of the threats of the enemy, the threats of the devil, he took off and began to run. Listen. In the 19th chapter, I believe it's the fourth verse, but he said himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down on a Jupiter tree he requested for himself that he might die. See, he rem he, he, in that situation, he forgot the miracles that God has already worked. He prayed it didn't rain. He prayed and the rain came. He seen God meet his need by the river of Ch uh, Cherith, the brook of Cherith, fed by the ravens, how the Lord met his need with uh, the widow's woman. It seems sometimes when we get in a certain position, we forget about our experience that we've had with God in the past. We forget about because we incumbent about such of a difficulty as Elijah was when he heard the threat from Jezebel that he took off and ran. I want to remind you uh, uh, people that God is the same God that you experience around these altars. He's the same God that you felt when you had tears running down your eyes. He's the same God when you felt the Holy Ghost on you. He's the same God today. Don't run from Him, but run to Him. And the Bible says that he prayed, God, take my life. I am no better than the others. Take me. He runs. He prays. He hides. 
But the Bible teaches us that when God came by, this is where we get in trouble sometimes. When we've gone through that type of situation, we expect earth shaking when we pray something to earth shaking take place. We expect a message and interpretation in tongues to tell us which way to go. It might be that way. I don't know. But we forget. Elijah said he wasn't in, God wasn't in the rain, in the storm, earthquake, but he came in a still small voice. He said, get up, boy. Get up. I'm not done with you yet. I'm not done with you. Looking at where you're at now, where are you at with the Lord right now? You've experienced the miracles of God in the past, but where are you now, right now? The Bible says examine yourselves whether you're being the faith. Prove yourselves. Prove yourself. When God spoke to Elijah, man like you and I, God said, I want to tell you something, Brother Elijah. I got 7,000. You might feel sorry for yourself, but I got 7,000 having bowed or been. You're not the only one. God said, I know what you're going through. I want to tell you, there's times I can't even feel him. Anybody with me? There's times that I've come and hadn't felt nothing. You know, I want to feel the shout, and I like to shout. And I want to tell you, when it's shouting time, we better get in right. while the water's stirred. But there's times, times comes in my life that I cannot feel nothing. Am I the only one feel that way? I feel dry as a bone. I don't feel nothing. But when I come to church and I watch somebody else getting blessed and I can say, God, <laughs> you're not dead, but you're alive. Touch me one more time. You've got to have a desire to look forward ahead. You've got to... Look back and see what he's done in the past. Remember being around the altar? Remember how you felt when you first got saved? He's the same God. Remember when you got sanctified, when you got filled with the Holy Ghost? He's the same God. Remember those days? Don't believe what the devil's telling you. Where are you now? We need to be looking ahead for what he's done. He said, Brother... Elijah, get up. I'm not done with you yet. I've got a guy I need you to train named Elisha. I need you to go. There's still work. You say, what is this? What are you talking about in getting ready to close? Even in my dryness... And when I get to that point, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I began to listen to his word through this book and through my prayer and my meditation. I began to give ear. Lord, I remember the past. I can't live in the past, but I remember what you've done. But Lord, I know where I'm at right now and I, where I'm at, I'm not real happy where I'm at. So I'm going to look forward. I'm going to look at my desire. My desire to live like Jesus. It's my desire just to be like Him. Where are you at with the, your relationship with the Lord? I want you to 
you getting ready a song that remember where we're at or where we've been most important where are you now in your relationship with the Lord are you looking forward to moving forward with him Elijah experienced the same thing some of you are experiencing this morning don't give up I heard somebody says this don't give up on God because he's not giving up on you did you hear me when you fail him and you fall short of his glory he hasn't forgive, uh, hadn't forgotten you he's waiting on you and I to come back and say Lord I'm sorry I want to move forward ahead will you bow your heads with me It's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire to live for Failed him and caused him shame. It's my desire.
just stand with us. Maybe you've grown a little cold. Maybe you're not just where you want to be with the Lord. Maybe you've gone through some of the things that Elijah went through. Don't give up on God because He's not giving up on you. What is your desire? I want to be like Jesus. Lord for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. have a desire to really to serve the Lord if you really have a desire maybe you're going through some difficult times a dryness a dry time in your Christian experience don't give up on God because he ain't give up on you maybe you're having some difficulties if you read that whole 17, 18, 19 chapter about Elijah, some of the difficulties he went through, but some of the miracles that God used him with. God's the same God his sister Odom plays for us at this time. If you really have a desire, you said, Preacher, I want to tell you, me pastoring years ago, I wanted to give up. Us preachers experience the same thing that you have. But sometimes uh, I would just want to throw up my hands and quit. But I thank God I, have, I didn't do that. I went through that valley. In that valley, he restored my soul. In that valley, I felt the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And if you this morning really have a desire in this closing prayer to follow Jesus... I'm going to ask you to come around. Pastor Ricky, would you come up here with me? If you have a desire to live for him, would you just come and stand in this closing prayer? Oh, I have a desire. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what difficulties that I'm going to see. I don't know if my house is... Uh, situation is going through I don't know tomorrow I might be stricken with like some of you are with cancer I don't know about tomorrow but I have a desire not to give up I have a desire not to give up on Jesus because he hasn't given up on me I have a desire when I look at the past and what he's done, 
and I see where I'm standing now and I'm looking forward to where I'm going I'm on my way to heaven how about you but I want to tell you what not only does heaven wait for me but I'm going to declare this to somebody here that I, you, there's victory on the way for you here on this earth I want to declare to somebody here there's healing for you not in heaven but right now on this earth don't give up don't give up keep that burning desire she tell him I can tell him she tell him I'm father in the name of Jesus Lord I don't know what tomorrow holds for me but I know you hold tomorrow I know Elijah went through the same things that I'm facing today. God, difficulties, the enemy. But Lord, surely as you gave him victory and you showed him, and you walked with him, you will walk with me. Lord, these that has come and stood around this altar, expressing a desire, Lord, saying, I won't give up because you're not giving up on me. I ask you to bless each one. Lord, I'm asking you to heal that cancer right now. Be gone. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to heal that financial problem. Lord, that one is having. Lord, that they will be faithful in their tithe and their giving. And you'll prove to them that your word is faithful. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let your word seep in to their hearts and our lives. Lord, that we won't give up, but we'll fight the good fight of faith. And Lord, until we meet again this side of heaven, go with us. Let us bless others in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Don't lose your desire. Remember the past. Look at where you're at now. Then look forward to where Jesus is going to lead you. Great things. Return to him and he'll return to you. Shake someone's hand, you'll be dismissed. To this evening at six o'clock, let's continue our worship.